First off, let's get to that top five underrated list. I'm going to go ahead and start with the top five underrated running backs in the game. Now, running backs are a big form of football. They're a big expression of, of what we see here every single week. They're really fun to watch. They're very underrated in their own likes. They've only won two MVPs, I believe, since the new millennium. So it's not an easy achievement to be a running back. It's very hard duty being one. And I think these guys in the league are very underappreciated, underrated, in my opinion. So we're gonna I think we're gonna have a bunch of different lists here. I don't know how, you know, if we're gonna agree on stuff or we think one guy's underrated, one guy's overrated. We'll see about that. That's why I like making these lists because I feel like they're very different. We don't congregate about these until we go live. So I think this is going to be very interesting. We're going to go 5-5-5, five, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I want to go with Kev first. Kev Ol, who is your number five underrated running back? Uh, my number five underrated running, running back is a legend in the Seattle Seahawks community. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, uh, my number five uh, Seattle. Just so you guys uh, know, his whole top five is going to be Seahawks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, there's an echo there. Uh, my number five is Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, this is a guy uh, that uh, didn't get a lot of attention. I know that they have a, one of the best offensive lines in the league. Uh, Andrew Luck uh, was able to produce a lot. And this guy quietly had a really good season last year uh, as the Indianapolis Colts have risen. And I think it, when we think about the Indianapolis Colts, we think about a guy that might be on a couple of other guys. We think about the year that Eric Ebron had. We think about T.Y. Hilton. We think about Darius Leonard. We think about Andrew Luck. But what Marlon Mack did, I think, uh, was very underappreciated. Uh, so I have him number five on my list, Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts. I like that, Kev. I, I, I like that the Colts were involved in there. It's a little bit of an interesting pick. Not the most hyped up guy in there. I think fully uh, qualifies for the underrated list. Mitch, who do you got at number five? At number five, I actually considered Marlon Mack for my list. Good pick, Kevil. I'm going with a running back who would be considered a backup running back in the NFL. It's Austin Eckler of the LA Chargers. Ooh. Austin Eckler last season played 14 games. He averaged 5.2 yards per attempt, three touchdowns, 554 yards. But he can also catch the football. 29 or 27 catches in 2017, 39 in 2018. I think he's steadily gotten better over his first two seasons in the NFL. And I do believe at a certain point in time, he's going to go to a team that's outside of LA and probably have more of an important role. Now, he plays an important role with the Chargers now as the primary backup to Melvin Gordon and also kind of a change of pace back. But I could see him kind of forming more of a one-two punch somewhere else once he becomes a free agent because I do believe he's going to get paid. So Austin Eckler is a really nice change of pace back in the NFL right now that I, I think is getting a little bit underappreciated. I like it. A little bit of a curveball. I wasn't expecting Austin Eckler. There is a prime candidate as well. I, I like that. I don't have him on my list, but certainly a good candidate. And number five for me, I have Carryon Johnson, the running back of the Detroit Lions. You guys know him. He was a second-round draft pick for the Lions in 2018. He got to start off, and it looked like a really good fit for him and the Lions offense. We were been, I, I specifically have been laughing about their running offense for years because they couldn't get a 100-yard rusher. Carry on Johnson was the guy to finally get it done when the offense decided Matt Patricia decided, you know, I think this guy is pretty good. Uh, and then they mixed other running backs in there, Theo Riddick, especially, and kind of threw the game off a little bit. But what Carry on Johnson was able to produce in the seven games he started was really good. 641 rushing yards, three touchdowns. He also had three receiving or uh, one receiving touchdown and over 200 yards receiving. He didn't get hurt, so he wasn't able to play the last couple of games of the season. But overall, I think this is a guy coming into year two with a Detroit offense that I think is going to work really well. He's going to put in some uh, some good yards. I expect, I think, a 1,000 yards rushing this year. I think that is a solid goal, and I think he'll get a lot more touches near the, the end zone as well. So I think this is a guy that put up some numbers in year one, but I think he's going to have an even better number two year. So that's why I'm here at number five. Kev Ol, number four. You know, when we think about the top running backs in the league, there's names like Zeke Elliott, Saquon Barkley, uh, Todd Gurley is still considered up there. Uh, but listen, look at these numbers. 219 attempts, 1,098 yards, 
107 receptions, 867 yards, six receiving touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns. Christian McCaffrey. It mm-hmm. is Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and we just don't put him – I have him on this list as number four because I think he is one of the top five running backs in the game, and we don't talk about him enough. Uh, as he's been, other than Cam, he was the whole of the Carolina Panther offense last year, and I think he's going to be a key guy again this year. And we think about other people before Christian McCaffrey, and so that's why I have him on my underrated list. I have him as number four. See, I, I, you know, you would think it would be a little bit difficult to put him on this list, but I have somebody at number one on my other list that I would uh, ter- perf- or excuse me, perfectly fit that mold of where they're ranked on certain lists. So. I definitely can see the reasoning for there. I like it. And, of course, Chris McCaffrey. I mean, a beast. So, Mitch, what do you got at number four? At number four, I have the running back that's closest to my heart, James White, at Mm. number four on the underrated list. James White had the best season of his career in 2018. He elevated his game both receiving-wise and rushing-wise. He went from a career high of 171 rushing yards to 425 and five touchdowns, averaging 4.5 yards per carry. Then receiving-wise, he went from a career high of 60 catches and 551 yards with five touchdowns to 87 catches, 751 yards, and seven touchdowns. This is a guy who in PPR fantasy football actually finished in the top six for running backs, and he's not even a starting running back. You could argue he's the best receiving in the league, and he's definitely one of the most clutch players in the league. So James White, I don't think gets enough credit because he's very quiet, and he kind of just does his job, and he's a part of the Patriots system, so nobody really gives him credit for being great. But he is great, deserves that credit. I like it. I like it. Definitely a James White guy. He even made a video about him last year, why he should have been the MVP at some point last year. Great video there. At number four for me is a guy that Kev already brought up, Marlon Mack of the Indianapolis Colts. This is a guy that I really liked coming in here. He's very young. He was 22 last year and put up some pretty good numbers. 908 rushing yards, nine touchdowns, also had a uh, receiving touchdown. And that's only in 12 games, and he only started 10. So that's pretty good production, almost uh, almost 100 yards per start. Um, He's going to get more opportunities. He also had a really good game against the Texans in the wild card round. Rushed for over 140 yards, rushed for another touchdown. Uh, this is a guy on a Colts offense that could really be a big weapon. Uh, of course, we know with their receivers and T.Y. Hilton and Eric Ebron on a tight end, but you throw in a third piece like Marlon Mack that can carry the load for Andrew Luck because you know he's going to sling the ball, but sometimes you've got to give it off to a good running back, and I feel like Indianapolis needs that. Marlon Mack stepped up for 900 yards last year. Definitely, definitely see him going over 1,000 this year if he stays healthy, and uh, a guy that I think is underappreciated given the talents of Andrew Luck in this Colts team. Again, a great offensive line helps him out, but he's still a really good running back and very young, just going to be 23 going into the season. So I have him here at number four. Kevo, what you got at number three? Number three is also a New England Patriot running back, um, and I do think that James White is is a good person to have on this list. I would have him seventh on my list, but I also think Sony Michelle. I think if you look at what New England, the New England running game does, and what they all have to do in a pretty complex offensive system, where you they change styles pretty much depending on the opponent and what you need to know. Uh, it's not only about stats, but it's about other things as well. And you look at Michelle's stats, they're not spectacular, uh, but with New England running backs, they're not necessarily going to be, but you have to do a lot more than just run the ball and catch the ball. You need to block as well. And I don't think Tony Michelle has gotten the appreciation Uh, gets the appreciation that the other guys do. So uh, for an overall running back, Sony Michelle, I think is, is one of the top in the league and we don't talk much about him. So I I have number three, Sony Michelle. I think one of the things that surprised me, Kev, is the fact that he had like the best playoff run of any running back since Terrell Davis. And nobody talks about that. Like absolutely nobody talks about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's all Edelman. It's all Brady. Yeah. It's Belichick. But you know, there's so much, you, and you know this, Mitch, because you watch closely. But the New England offense is, is a complex offense. It's not mm-hmm. just one style. So, knowing what you need to know in the New England offense, and being only in his second year in the league, so I think that that's what he's done is quite impressive. 
All right. I, I, I like it. You know, I, I definitely see Sony Michelle as a guy that's going to come in here and make the plays. I, again, like Mitch said, a really great uh, postseason for him. A lot of great games there. And uh, he even scored the lone touchdown in the Super Bowl. We forget about that. Yeah. Mitch, what do you have here number three? At number three, I have my boy who I think has been underrated for his entire life. Coming into the NFL, he wasn't even invited to the combine. Philip Lindsay is my number three. Ooh, nice. uh, he made the Pro Bowl this year, despite not starting the year as a starting running back. Everybody was talking about Freeman, Freeman. And you know what's crazy? Everybody is still talking about Freeman, like Freeman, Freeman this, Freeman that. No, it's Philip Lindsay's backfield. He had 1,000 yards. Nine touchdowns on the ground, 5.4 yards per carry, 35 catches, 241 yards, and a touchdown. This guy's electric. I think he's one of the best running backs in the open field. He's not going to overpower you, but he's very quick, and once he hits that hole, he's gone. Philip Lindsay is only 24 years old. He's going into his second season. I think he will see a little bit of split time with Freeman coming up this season, but, man, this guy is too electric. He kind of reminds you of – a little bit of a Chris Johnson, and I think that's what he's going to give the Broncos in the coming years. The only reason I didn't put him on my list is because I feel like a lot of people hyped him up when the season was going on last year. He was a lot of headlines, got all the press. He definitely is a great player. I'm not mad about that. I just think he has broken that underrated status, but I, I do see the reason. I think he's underrated now. I, I understand what you're saying during this season, but I feel like he's underrated now because nobody's talking about him now. Like Even if you... Like a lot of the fantasy buzz right now is like about Royce Freeman. So yeah, like I, I, I don't really hear much about Philip Lindsay. So I just think it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I, and I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And that's the reason I'm, you know, I'm cool with it. I, I definitely see the reasons. And I don't really get why Royce Freeman's getting this attention. I don't think he did all that much impressive things last year. But yeah, I, I definitely like it. He's Philip Lindsay is one of my favorite players. Uh, running backs in the game. Lindsay really did take over the offense in Denver at the end of the year last year. Yeah, it wasn't really Royce Freeman that, that much. No, I mean he was he was making electric plays. He had more stellar games. He was more consistent. That's for damn sure. And when Royce Freeman was given the opportunity, it always seemed like Philip Lindsay just filling the role a lot better. So yeah, why well, I, I think he was better. At number three, uh, a guy that Mitch already mentioned, James White. This is a guy that I really enjoyed. Uh, when you use some of the Patriots offense, he, he's lights out. And I feel like the Patriots offense a little bit towards the second half of the year just didn't use him, utilize him as much as the first half. And I was a little bit critical about that. But if you see what he's able to do, it literally, if you go to his pro football uh, reference stats, you're not going to see rushing first. You're going to see receiving first because he's that crazy at catching the football. 87 receptions, 751 yards and seven receiving touchdowns. Rushing wise, like Mitch said, more rushing yards than he's ever had in his career. Uh, he only had 94 attempts, but he had 425 yards and five touchdowns. So he's a dynamic guy um, with the Patriots offense. I think especially in 2018 was more focused on the run game. They were able to use Sony Michelle as uh, Kevo brought up. They were able to use him in the run game and then throw in a little bit of James White as protection. And uh, I think James White did a pretty good job. Of course, towards the end of the year, it slowed down a little bit. But this is a guy that I think still has a lot of things to give here. Uh, he's going in here his sixth season. He's really good in the playoffs, almost lights out in the playoffs most of the time. And, uh, again, a guy that's on a Patriots team, a dangerous Patriots team, that can do a lot of things for them and needs to get more attention. So that's why I have him here at number three. But I like both guys. Both guys, I think, uh, are definitely underrated. And I like that both of them are included on – at least each of our lists here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At number two. Number two, I have a guy that was drafted in the seventh round, 249th. Uh, not a lot of people heard of this guy. He got injured in 2017, but we mm -hmm. were introduced to him this year as part of the Seahawks package. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not being a homer uh, here, <laughs> but I, I'm basing this also on what pro football focus did that had, they rated him in the twenties, I believe, uh, in their rankings. And that's Chris Carson. Uh, and that's just why I have him in number two is just that people don't seem to know him. They haven't valued him as much as he is. You could argue he could be a breakout player. You can make that argument. He's a breakout player, but I just think that this guy runs very physically. He's, I'm not comparing him to Marshawn Lynch, but he's the type of running uh, back uh, sim in a similar style. 
uh, just a really good uh, running back um, uh, uh, behind the line that I think is improving and is a better line. But, uh, you know, uh, they focused on him He's and he stays healthy. I think he's going to have a really strong year. Uh, so I Chris Carson is number two. Chris Carson, the boy, got a lot of hype. He made a lot of great plays last year, the flip in Carolina. A lot of great stuff there. Uh, I think he's a very solid pick. We'll be looking at that further. <laughs> Mitch, what do you got at number two? You are you are on mute, sir. You're on mute. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> I actually agree with Kevil on something. I had to stop myself from laughing at Dilly's solid mention. <laughs> Chris Carson's my number two. I believe I put him on my top 10 most underrated players in the NFL. So Chris Carson, I believe like he's getting a little bit more attention, but still as a player that had 1,100 yards, as a player that carried the football as much as he did, 247 rushes, you know, nine touchdowns. Like that's, that's putting trust in a running back. That's running the football. That's being a bell cow running back. But now we're all of a sudden hearing that Rashad Penny's going to be the guy and he's going to take the football away from Chris Carson and there's going to be more of a, a heavy split between the two and that the team really wants to push towards Penny. And it's like, really, did you watch last season? Like, this guy was efficient with the football. He carried the football a ton. He was arguably their offensive MVP. And like Kev says, he's a tough runner. I think he really – imposes the style that the Seahawks want to play with. And he's only 24 again, a guy that's going into his third season and I think has plenty left in the tank. I, I don't see a reason to take the carries away from him going into next season. Well, great minds think alike because at number two, I have Chris Carson. I'm glad that we all had him at the exact same spot. And I think, you know, I pretty much agree with these guys. You know, what's funny is I all think we're going to have different number ones. Yeah, really? I think we are. I think we are too. Okay. I mentioned at least we agreed on this one though. Uh Chris Carson's a guy that, you know, in Seattle with the three-headed monster we had last year, they all brought something different to the table, which is why I really like that system. And uh considering the running back crew that was there in 2017, which was nobody, having this trio was really, really nice to see. And Chris Carson, I think, was the biggest highlight. Uh, like Kevil brought up, he was hurt in 2017, only started three games, only got to play in four. But this year, started in 14, oh, uh, 1,151 rushing yards and nine touchdowns. He was really, really solid, especially the like the second half of the year. He really put on the gas pedal and really put on some really great performances. And I think teams were starting to see that a little bit. Um, and, and like you guys are bringing up, Rashad Penny taking over. I don't really know why. It's a guy that I like, but he was a little bit of a stretch at the uh, first round pick when he was drafted. And uh, now he's getting that role. I think Chris Carson did more for his team. It was just more efficient. I know uh, Penny didn't get as many opportunities as Chris Carson here, but I think Chris Carson was able to take those opportunities and roll it. So you can't say that he was given the opportunities and didn't do anything with them. He did a great job, made some great plays, was able to run very hard, and helped the Seattle Seahawks get into the playoffs. I think he was a big contributor to that. So at number two, we all have Chris Carson. Now – you bring up the mention of different number ones. I want to hear it. Kev, Kev is your number one as I go get my charger. Sean Alexander. Yes. Legend. Well, you look back at this guy's draft year, there was a lot of questions about him because of an incident, an off-field incident. And he went lower than, than uh, I think his talent showed up. And he's playing in a place that no one really is paying attention to. Nobody is talking about this. If we're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals, we're talking about the Cincinnati Bengals as being one of the worst teams in the NFL. Uh, we have no idea who really don't know much about Zach Taylor. We question their coach. We we really look at this team as a very bland team. But Joe Mixon is the fourth best rusher in the National Football League last year. 237 carries, 1,168 yards. 4.9 average, uh, which was better than Zeke's uh, for 61st downs. Uh, he's a guy. Uh, um, he's a guy we don't pay a lot of attention to. But if the Cincinnati Bengals are going to do anything, Joe Mixon's going to be the guy that is going to contribute a lot more. And I know that there's a lot of talk about AJ Green, and we kind of want to ignore the Cincinnati Bengals. But considering where this guy has come 
from and what this guy has done against comparing to other situations, similar situations here in the NFL, he has gotten it and has put his life together. He's put his priority together. I have Joe Mixon as the most underrated running back in the National Football League. I like it. Very, very good choice at number one, a guy that fits the mold because he's in the Bengals offense. Who likes the Bengals offense? Who likes the Bengals team? You know what I'm saying? So having that kind of player stand out, I really try. Don't, don't, don't even try. I saw the raising of the hand. Not a chance. Who do you got at number one, Mitch? I want to see. Is it different than Kevl? Yes, it is. Mm. I have a player that, okay, Joe Mixon, I love. Like, I think he is underrated, but he is too good for me to be underrated. I don't know if that makes sense. (laughs) So, that being said, my number one is a player that their own team doesn't even use enough. That's how underrated he is, okay? Okay. If you can name him, he led the NFL in yards per attempt. Can I take a guess? I think I know who it is. Okay. Is it Aaron Jones? It is Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. He played 12 games last year, but in those 12 games, he only had 11 carries a game. This upcoming season, I think Aaron Jones, after having 728 yards and eight touchdowns in 2018, I think he's going to go over 1,000. I think he's going to go over 10 touchdowns. I think he's going to have a great season in this new Matt LaFleur offense. And he is one of the most explosive running backs in the league. Two years in a row, 5.5 yards per attempt, led the NFL in that category this season, upped his total to 26 and 206. And I think in this offense this year, he is going to be the player that really breaks out the most at this position, in my personal opinion. And I just see this guy, another young running back that – even his own team just needs to utilize more, and I think they're going to do that in 2019, and not enough people are giving the love to Aaron Jones because I think at a certain point before the season last year, everyone was like, okay, who's the Packer running back that's going to separate themselves? Aaron Jones has truly separated himself as the number one back for Green Bay. I, I definitely – I thought I was seeing that coming. Uh, a lot of people, when I was looking at these lists, like uh, searching online, like who – the people think are underrated. Aaron Jones was near the top or at the top of the list. So really? I can never understand. Yeah, I, I, de- I definitely agree with the pick. I didn't put him on my list because I just don't know what the Packers offense is going to bring. But again, maybe, you know, he brings something new, to, uh, different to the table. And I, I, I remember, I believe it was the Patriots game. Like, why are they not giving them more chances to Aaron Jones? So, you know, I agree. I, I definitely like it. But at number one, I do not have a different pick. I have Kev Ohl's same pick at number one. I have Joe Mixon at number one. Here's the reason, right? Joe Mixon is a great running back that I feel like, in terms of the, the landscape of the NFL, is just not talked about enough. You, know, you brought up with Christian McCaffrey how he's not really discussed as a top five running back when he should be, and I believe that is correct. I feel like Joe Mixon is a top ten running back that doesn't get that respect. He doesn't get that attention from the media because – I think he's in a really crappy market and a really crappy team. Um, When you look at what the Bengals have done, even if you want to say that they're going to get better in 2019, you look at what they've been doing for the last three years and they've either been hurt or they just really haven't been very good. But the lone, you know, standout for me besides AJ Green, because AJ Green is great, is Joe Mixon. A thousand, uh, 1,168 rushing yards, eight touchdowns. He also got a uh, receiving touchdown. Uh, he only started 13 games as well. So, again, could have averaged a little bit more if he was healthy all the way through. Uh, a guy that I think is going to, you know, be a, a lone bright spot in the offense because I, I really don't see that much hype for me this year with the Bengals. But if there's a guy that I would want to see week in and week out, look for fantasy numbers, look for something that you need to be reliable for. I think Joe Mixon's going to be the guy. I know Mitch said he's just a little bit too good for this list, but I feel like he just doesn't get that attention. He doesn't get that, that love that I think he should be getting. So that's why I got him. Yeah. When I, when I look at underrated, I, I, I look at a guy that I think has ability that don't people don't pay attention to. So to me, Joe Mixon fits what I what I believe. Now, I understand if you think that he's too talented, I guess, but... I, I, I considered him for the list, but then I thought about it, and I was like, well, people are going to be like, oh, everybody already thinks Joe Mixon is great. So, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe like, as a person that pays too close attention to the NFL, I already think he's great, so I don't know what everyone else thinks. 
So maybe it's kind of one of those inside outside sort of things. I I I feel like you just kind of have I kind of have to give it to. I feel like the 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 landscape of the whole football universe just doesn't feel the same way, you know. I feel like we need to push that. Joe Mixon greatness, all right? So yeah, that's our list. I you know I wanted to bring Aaron Jones some love. <laughs> a little diverse. I think there was a bunch of different guys and I think all of these running backs were good. There's not one guy that I was like, "No, he's overrated or he's he's bad." I think all of these guys were great picks. So Thank you, guys. I, I enjoyed those lists quite a bit. And we even agreed at uh, number two. So good stuff there.